Statistics and Excel binomial experiment asking the question, do you own a pet? Two possible responses, yes or no, hence the term binomial. Get ready and some coffee, because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay, because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have a first, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product because... The fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Access three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank. Example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells. So you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We will construct this from a blank worksheet, practicing our Excel tool tools as we build it. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building, looking at a scenario similar to recent examples that we have seen, except this time we have a binomial type of situation. The similarity being that we're trying to find information about a larger population. We cannot test every item within the larger population, therefore we would like to be able to take a sample, test what we want to find out about with the sample, hopefully being able to apply the results to the larger population. However, if we have a population of say heights or weights or something like that, the results in our sample will be varied. For heights, it might be like 5'9", 5'11", 6'2", and so on and so forth. But with this example, we have a binomial situation, which could happen if you have like a survey, which we are imagining here, the survey being, do you own a pet? So we're trying to find the ratio of the population that owns pets. If it was a polling situation, then who are you going to vote for? If there's only two can candidates, or are you gonna vote for this candidate or not? You could have like a binomial type of situation, surveys such as, do you like this product? or you do you not like this product, which would have a binomial two answered type of situation. Now this can be easier in some ways, but it can also seem a little bit confusing in other ways. And it's gonna have a little bit difference in terms of the equation we're gonna be using, which we can call the equivalent of X bar, which is the P bar, but the general example or idea is the same. That being that we would like to be able to use a bell-shaped type of curve because we know a lot about the bell-shaped curve we know the middle point being the mean or average and we can define the spread of the data with the standard uh, deviation but if we look at a binomial situation if we asked the if we had all the data for the entire population and we said do you own a pet or not and we said if they own a pet we'll give you a one and if you don't own a pet we'll represent that with a zero then if you graphed that, you're not going to get, of course, a situation of a bell curve. You're going to get two bars in terms of the histogram. Either they own the pet or they don't own uh, the pet. Now, the two things that we want to understand here, the main thing that we're trying to figure out is the average, the middle point. Now, if we look at these two bars and we say one, this bar over here, is, we count them, and this is what we're looking for, we can take, you know, this number divide plus this number divided by the total and get in essence a ratio or if these are the ones and these are the zeros then that ratio the focal point is basically the mean that is in essence what we're looking for that's why we're calling it in essence the probability 
instead of like an average height where we would want to get a result that would be like, you know, 510 or something like that, right? And so that's going to be uh, the general idea. Now, the central limit theorem still applies here. So with the central limit theorem, the idea is, well, although this isn't a bell shape, if we were to take all possible combinations of samples, in our case, we're imagining the population 1.4 million, 1,400,000, we're going to take 300 as the sample. If we took 300 samples and then we took the average of all of those 300 samples all of the com all the possible combinations of 300 samples out of the 1.4 million then the those data would then result in tending towards a bell-shaped curve just like we saw before so it's the similar uh, kind of concept there's two things we need to know about that curve if we want to define it the middle point the mean which once again i if i think of the mean of the entire population that's going to be the ratio of the population uh, that in this case owns pets versus don't we can think about the mean of one sample which we're going to take of 300 here and the middle point should hopefully approximate the entire population or we can imagine that we took all combinations of 300 samples within the population and we took the mean of all that data and again we should get a mean that's going to tend towards the entire population but with the standard deviation it's different right you have the standard deviation of the actual population uh is not what we're really looking for here because we were looking for the standard deviation of all of the x bars which now you can call the p bars right so we're not looking for the standard deviation of one sample we're imagining similarly as we saw before that we took all combinations of samples of 300 and took the average or mean of all of those and are looking for basically the standard deviation of that which we you were approximating with this formula before so if we were measuring like heights or something like that we might use this formula for the x bars which would be the standard deviation of the population if we knew that or standard deviation of the sample possibly if we didn't divided by the square root of n which would be the sample size and then we have our correction factor which we can also then drop off if we have a large population here because of the difference i won't prove this kind of mathematically but we have a different formula because we're looking at the percentages or the ratios we have our same correction factor which we can typically drop off in this case clearly we typically can because we have a large population compared to the sample size and then we're going to take the square root of p which is going to be like the, the average right the percent and then times one minus p that would be the people that don't you know uh in this case own a pet divided by n which is the sample size in this case is going to be the 300. so what we'll do is we'll actually create our sample here with a random number generation we'll take the the ratio that we come out to we'll graph this out and then uh we'll do our calculations on it we're going to imagine uh, a brackets that we want around it the margin of error and then we will approximate a, a creation of a bell-shaped curve based on uh, the data that we put together now the practice tab has pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less excel formatting the blank tab is where we will work here let's start by selecting the entire worksheet right click on it format the cells like we typically do going to go to the currency negative numbers bracketed remove the dollar sign remove the decimals we'll add the decimals back as needed and say okay i'm going to go to the home tab the uh font group make it bold you might not need to make it bold but i think it's useful for uh screen recordings i'm going to put binomial experiment as my title i will make that uh let's just make it wider and then i'm going to make it black and white home tab font group i'll make it black and white and then i'm actually going to copy over this information which is going to be the data which you could just type in if you want and i'll copy these formulas which you can create if you would like i know i'm kind of cheating i said i was going to build it from scratch now i'm copying things over but uh here we go so i'm going to then say to just bring this down to like here and then okay so if you wanted to build these formulas then you could 
do that by I would go to the insert equations and then ink a formula and then you can type it in even with a mouse you can kind of do it like here's this here's the p bar p bar and then equals and then so and then notice it got a little wonky here so you can try to circle this and say I want that to be like a p bar over here and I can't really find it right there so I'd have to erase it and maybe put the bar like closer and then maybe it'll figure it out to do like right above there and now it did it again so now I want to like circle this and then see if I can find it I don't have it there so I'd have to retype it in I won't keep on messing with it but if you mess with it enough that's how I created these and you can kind of uh, write your formulas that way which is somewhat tedious but not too bad actually even with a mouse all right given that Let's go in and then say we're, we have our data, binomial situation, survey. We're going to be saying we're looking for the proportion of a population that owns pets. We're going to imagine the population is 1.4 million uh, people, 1,400,000. And we're going to be taking a sample of 300, asking them, do you own a pet or not? And we're going to get the inevitable response. Does a pet rock count? Because I put little googly eyes on it and we're like, no pet rocks don't count it only counts if if the thing if you have to pick up crap you the pet has to if you pick up crap then it defines that's how you define if it's an actual pet or not so do you own a pet so i'm going to say we're going to say the responses are going to be one if they own the pet and then one minus p would be the people that say no they don't own the pet no pet except that pet rock that doesn't count because the maintenance is not required there you don't have the maintenance required of picking up the crap so it does not qualify that's cheating let's go to the home tab we're going to go to the clipboard format paint here and then format paint it and then we're going to be counting and then i'm going to put 300 so this is going to be our questionnaire which will do a random generation of ones and twos which means it'll be about 50 percent right here is what we would expect i'm going to say one two we're going to do 300 of these i'm going to select those two put my cursor on the fill handle drag it down excel should see the pattern you could use a sequence function to do this but 300 really isn't that far down so i like to just do it this way it's pretty easy to do and i can ramble as it goes down so it, people don't get too bored because they like to hear this rambling of my talking as I go. And then we're going to say this is going to be the data. And then we'll put a random number generation. Equals rand, rand, between. And we want it to be between. The bottom number is going to be zero. And the top number is going to be one. Close it up. There's our binomial distribution. Put our cursor back on it. Double click the fill handle. Taking it down. Control shift down to double check that it went to 300. It did. Control back or up to go back up. Let's format these. I'm going to make these blue and bordered. Home tab, font group, border and blue. If you don't have that blue, by the way, it's over here. Uh, standard. You can use any color you want, but it's right there. I like to use the blue because it calms me down. I'm going to make this black and white. Home tab, font group, black and white let's center it while we're here so all this craziness is happening in the world control shift down control backspace and then you're like D what is going on this is crazy worldness but then you got the calm blue ocean calm blue ocean calm blue ocean this is crazy it's okay calm blue ocean see that's why the blue is and then i'm going to select these two and we're going to double click in the middle making it as small as we can while still fitting the data then i like to make them a little bit wider just in case like if i scroll in and out that it doesn't get messed up hopefully okay and so then we're going to select so that's our 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 sample so we imagined we asked 300 people these are the responses we got and we told them we told them if it doesn't take a crap if you're not picking up crap it doesn't count so we they got legitimate data here people trying to skew the numbers on us with rocks it's ridiculous so we're going to go to the home tab and then we're going to go to paintbrush and we'll put that over here uh h 
And then let's count out our results. So we've got the P, do they own the pet? And we're gonna say, okay. And this is gonna be equal to, I'm gonna just count it up. Count, count up the results, por favor, please. Control shift, wait, no, I wanna say count if. Count if there's a one. So I'm gonna say now select all this, control shift down, control backspace, and then comma. What's the criteria? Find all the ones. I'll put that one right there. Enter 159 out of the 300. And then one minus the P, these are the ones that say no, the ones that don't own the pet, or obviously you can get that by saying it's gonna be 300 minus the 149. Cause you might have some people that say, I don't know. And if they don't say, I don't know, then you're like, you're too stupid to own a pet if you don't know. So I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna mark it off as a no here. And so we don't have any I don't knows cause it's a binomial experiment, okay? We don't have a category for I don't know, man. That's not a response on the survey, okay. So then this is gonna be count if, and then we'll, we'll say tab and control shift down, control backspace and then comma the criteria here is going to be zero now of course we could have found that by 300 minus this i think i showed you that right but i don't like doing that because i want to plug that would be a plug here and i want to be able to total it up for the double check to make sure that if i say alt equal summing it up little darling sum it up little darling then it adds up to 300 giving us that double check so then we're going to go to the home tab font group let's put some borders around it make it blue and so it's calming nice calming blue calm blue ocean i don't care about your rock no your rock isn't a pet no your rock isn't i don't care if you how much you love the rock you're crazy calm blue o calm blue ocean calm blue ocean we're gonna go to let's take the the percent which is gonna be this 158 divided by 300 F4 in the keyboard so I can copy it down, enter, back on it. Let's percentify to recognize number group, percentify, adding some decimals, and then we'll copy it down. So there's the two, and then we'll sum it up. Alt equals sum it up. And then we're gonna go to the number group, percentify to recognize, add some decimals. Let's put some calm blue ocean around it. Home tab, blue and bordered okay oh my goodness my blood pressure just went down right there just with the blueness of it made my made my blood pressure good okay so now let's say if we graph this thing let's put a graph around it so we get that nice binomial graph control shift down control backspace because we're going to put the graph right here insert we're going to go to charts hit the drop down and then we'll do a histogram so the buckets are basically just going to be zero. The zeros representing they don't own. Uh, oh my goodness, what did I do? Where they don't own on the zero and then they own over here. Let's put some right click on the data and put some labels on it. So then they give us our labels up top. So there's the 143 that don't own and the ones that own 157, the percent then being 52% if we add those two up. And that of course is gonna be, we can think of that as basically like the middle point of the histogram. Now, obviously the histogram is not in the format of a of a bell curve, right? Uh, but, but we can think about if I took multiple examples or samples of 300 or possibly all possible samples of 300, for a population of 1.4, and then I took the average, which is basically this, right, of all possible samples, then, then, and then I took that data, that would typically tend towards the bell shape is the general idea. Okay, so let's take this, so let's go to this one here, make a skinny, I'm gonna go to the home tab, uh, clipboard skinny, skinnerize the L, skinnerize the L, and then we'll say this is gonna be, P, which is going to be once again uh, the pro uh, proportion that own a pet. So based based on our sample, we, we're going to say the proportion that owns the pet is going to be this 54. It's going to keep on changing, but we're going to just say there it is. I'm going to percentify to recognize, and then add some decimals, 
and then we're going to say then 1 minus p, 1 minus p. So if you're given in a binomial experiment, if we're given p, then uh, 1 minus p. Should I have a big or small p? I was concerned about the big or small p. p, well, whatever. Maybe it should be a small p. I've been using a small p. And then big p maybe should be for the population. Uh, I'm getting this little, all right, so let's do it that way. And then we're gonna say this is gonna be uh, equal to pro proportion with no pet, with no pet. And that's gonna be equal to the 50.33, of course. And then we're gonna say percentify to recognize, add some decimals. And then we're gonna say N is gonna be the population. So N equals the population, which sometimes I just call the pop, right? The pop, because it's shorter. And so, and then that's gonna be, we said one, four, ho, 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 1. 4 million, 1, 400, 000, And then little n is equaling the sample size, just like we saw before, which we said was 300. I can do that with a count, just to double check it and use our formula, count. We just want to count the numbers of all those. These are all the yes or no's that we got from the survey and 300 of them. And then we have the expected P bar, let's say P bar uh, equals the, the pop, the pop mean. So the, the P bar, which we're basically imagining as all, all that's going to be our, our, in essence, our mean, right? But there's only two numbers. So we're taking basically, this is going to be it, right? For our mean for the average. So we're going to say this is going to be equal to the proportion that we got 5267. And so we're just going to say add some decimals percentify to recognize, add some decimals. And then we've got uh, our questions of is n over n uh, uh, less than less than five percent? And remember, that's the question to tell us whether or not when I use this formula, which is now this formula instead of this formula, but we have the same question that we had with this part of it, which is now this part of it, which is do I can I drop that off or not? And if the population big N is large enough, this should be a little n over, then it's likely that we will because the because our population, our sample will not be big compared to the to the population. And so in this case, if I take that 300, the, well, let's do it this way, I put it right here, 300 divided by the 1 million four. So that's gonna be two, 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 obviously it's not over the 5%. So we can drop off the second part of the formula, we don't need the the second bit of the formula we're just going to use this bit okay and so then that's cool and then we're going to say that the uh the standard error let's do the calculation then for the standard error which is basically like the standard deviation of all of the p bars right as though we took all combinations of 300 we took the average of all those combinations, right? And now, and that's gonna be what we're simulating with this formula. So that's what this formula is basically doing. It's gonna be the P, which is the ratio times one minus P divided by N, the square root of all of that. So if we see that here, we see here's P, here's one minus P, and here is N. So I'm gonna say, let's do that. It's gonna be equal to the square root, and we're just applying this formula, but we have a conceptual idea of what it is doing, right? Similar kind of thing. And then we're saying that that's gonna be the square root of, uh, what did I see? I said P, which is this one, times, and then one minus P. I don't need to say one minus P because I already calculated it here. So I'm just gonna say that is one minus P, and then all of that divided by, and I don't need to put brackets around it because it's going to do this first because it's multiplication and division. So divided by then n, 
which is going to be this close up the bracket it's going to be the square root of all of that and enter adding some decimals so that we can see that uh, decimalize to recognize and then we have another check figure that we might use which is is n times p uh, greater than five and uh, is n times let's say is n times uh, one minus p uh, greater than five now this is a double check to see whether or not this distribution will tend towards a bell-shaped curve and so so if this is if this is true then we should be okay to be able to approximate this with a bell-shaped curve imagining that if we took all possible samples of 300 out of the 1 million 400 and so on that the average of all those would tend towards a bell-shaped curve which we're approximating with this calculation for the standard deviation of p bar okay which is what we can use which was what we can create our bell-shaped curve from so let's do that calculation we're going to say this is going to be n which we which we said was 300 times p which is here to do it that's over five so we should be good and this one is going to be n 300 times one minus p which we have here that's over five so we should be good there we could do a little logic test for uh, these calculations to see if we're good let's just play with our logic tests here so i'd like to say true if this is if this is greater than uh, uh or less than 0 0.05 so i'm going to say if logic test if this is uh less than let's say 0 0.05 i'll just type it in there then comma what we would like you to do is give me a quotes a t i have to put it in quotes because that's how we do a text field comma what do you want us to do if it's not true quote put an f in in quote in the brackets and it puts a true so we should be good there this one we can do the same thing equals if tab if this number is greater than five then comma what do you want us to do quotes put a t end quotes comma what do you want us to do if we don't have that quote put an f end quote and close it up and enter same thing here equals if we're going to say this tab this number is greater than five then quote put a t end quote comma if not quote put an f end quote close it up boom boom okay and then we could even put a format painter on it and say format paint let's do all of these and say format paint and say if it is equal to a t then i want you to make it green and format paint equal to an f then make it red and if i made this into an f it would turn red oh that is fancy pantsy i've got pleats pleats on my pants those are fancy pleats pleats are all the whole thing is a pleat fancy pantsy all right so let's make that border blue selecting it home tab font group border blue oh calm blue ocean all right let's flow over to the next one here uh, we'll make a skinny i'm going to select the column l home tab clipboard format paint skinny p and then we'll make some headers over here i'm going to say this is going to be the margin of error now i don't want to make this so wide and i don't want to do the wrapping text thing because it makes this cell fat on the left and i don't like that so if i'm not going to make a table out of it i'm going to say i'm going to put this error bit on the bottom and put it right there and then i'll make it into a header that looks nice on two rows so this is going to be p bar one this is going to be the lower and then i'm going to call this p bar two which is going to be the upper and then i'm going to call this p of p bar and then i'll also think of it in terms of 
the Z, which will be the, the lower, and then the Z, which is the upper. And then, so that's gonna be our headers. This will make more sense once we start to fill this in. Let's select this, home tab, font group, black, white, center it. All right, I'm gonna make a larger Q column. And then I'm gonna say, this is gonna, I'm gonna say, what is the probability, probabil probability that the sample proportion will be uh, within, I'm gonna say plus or minus, and I'm gonna say, put that over here, that's gonna be the margin of error, which I'm gonna say 0.03 and I'll percentify that. So number, or not percent, I'll just say 0 0.03. Okay, so we're gonna, so the margin or of error is is basically how, if we're talking about the center point, we said the center point is uh, 47, and we're trying to figure out a margin of error around it, which is given in this case of uh, the 0 0.03. So what's the probability that we would be within that range? In other words, if I go over to this tab just to look at the example, if the middle point is the mean here, then I'm thinking about the the margin of error is going to be the space on either side of it. And what's the probability that will be in that center point somewhere, given the bell shaped curve that we will create uh, shortly. So if we were to think about that, we could say, okay, well, then, then if this is our margin of error, then we're just going to be saying, all right, that's going to be the lower bit is going to be the middle point, which is the mean, which in this case is just the proportion. That's going to be the proportion of 47. It's going to keep on changing on us, but then we're going to subtract out the margin of error 0.03 or basically 3%. And there, there we have it. And I'm going to say, let's add some decimals and we get the 42. The upper bit is going to be the middle point the mean or the proportion 4467 plus the proportion that we want to see how how far around that are we going to go and plus that margin of error let's percentify to recognize that du, du, du. and then uh we'll just say oh, do i need more than that and then the the then we can calculate that so we can imagine we have something like this orange bit in the middle and I'm trying to figure out the, the, the probability of it being within that middle point. If I use my norm.dist of a normal distribution, it's going to go up to the point that I go to if it's cumulative. So I'm going to go up to this point, and then I'm going to subtract out this blue bit, right? That's going to be the idea. This isn't the exact numbers, but that's the idea. So I'm going to say, all right, this is going to be equal to norm.dist, and I'm going to say the, the x is going to be the low the upper we're going to start at the upper that's going to be the x comma the mean is this 5367 and then comma the standard deviation is going to be what we calculated for the standard error standard error and then comma we want it to be cumulative therefore a one close it up that's going to give us up to the higher point minus up to the low point minus the bit the bit of the tail on the left end that we want to subtract out norm.dist and this is going to be the lower x comma the mean is the same comma standard deviation is the same comma we want it to be cumulative therefore one instead of zero and close it up and we can then add some decimals do, do, do. and so we've we've get this the 70 70 percent about now we can also think about it in terms of uh, the Z. So I can think about it in terms of in standard deviation. So if I go over here, now we've looked at this middle bit, which I can also say, I can measure the endpoints in the percentages, but I can also measure them in standard deviations, which is the Z's, right? And the middle point is zero. And then how many standard deviations above it and below it when we're looking at uh, this particular range. So to do that, I'm just going to convert this and this into standard deviations. 
So how do you do that? It's going to be equal to this number minus the mean, which is the proportion, close it up, divided by the standard deviation, which is the standard error, enter, and let's percentify, or let's just decimalize. So there we have the lower, and then so it's one standard deviation under, right, on, on the z-score, 1.04, and then, and then, and then the lower is going to be equal to brackets this minus, or this is the upper, this minus the 52, and then uh, close up the brackets, and then divide it by the standard, uh, the standard error to do it. So let's make some decimals there. Da, 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 da. And so same on the upper because it's symmetrical. So let's do it here. So so same thing. I'll just copy this. What if ba ba ba? Same idea. But now we're gonna say it's 0.06, and then uh, point uh, oh four not what? No, let's say 0 0.06, 0 0.06. So that's gonna be my margin of error. So I'll just do the same thing. So the the lower is gonna be the middle point. It's going to be the middle point minus that, adding some decimals. Du, du, du. So this is the range around that middle point. And then I'm going to say this is going to be the middle point plus that. So that's going to be the upper and lower that we're imagining around the middle point of the bell curve. The probability, we're going to add the probability up to the big spot minus the probability of this blue bit. So that's going to be with the norm.dist because it's now in the form of a bell curve. So norm.dist, it's going to be the x of the upper, the high one, comma, the mean proportion, comma, standard error, which is, which is the standard deviation is the standard error, comma, one for cumulative, close it up, minus the uh, norm.dist up to the lower x, comma, the mean, comma, the standard error, comma, one, cumulative, close it up, enter, decimalize. And so there we have that. And then in terms of z-scores, this is going to be equal to the lower z-score is going to be this minus the proportion, close it up, divided by the standard error, add some decimals, dut, 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 dut. And then this is going to be equal to the upper minus the proportion. I have to put brackets around it so it does that first. And then d -d 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 divided by the standard error. Add some decimals there. D -d 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 -d. And so, so, there, so there we have that. Okay. Now, notice this kind of makes sense because we, we always say that if two standard deviations away from the middle point, which is about this, if it were two standard deviations, we, we would expect that middle to fall in with a normal curve of about like 95 or so, right? So that kind of looks like it's making sense. Let's graph this or let's blue and border this. Blue and border, calm down, relax, calm blue ocean. And then let's make a graph of it. We're going to make our P format paint. We're running long on time. Calm blue ocean. This is, you're doing, you're breaking your own rules, man. There's, you're running too much time, pulling too much time here. Okay. Just stay calm. We've got this. We're going to say this is going to be the graph data. And I'm going to say this is for, let's graph this thing. So to graph it, I would like to map out uh, I would like to map out how big the graph needs to be. Now, this is kind of confusing because the numbers keep changing <laughs> because we, we had to keep on adjusting. So I'm going to put some difference, but it should be like four. You know, we're, we could say four standard deviations would be just about all of the data in the graph. So if I took a lower uh, X, the lower X, how far down does the graph need to go? I can take uh, the middle point, which I'll say is going to be this times four standard deviations uh whoops middle point minus middle point minus i'm sorry the standard deviation which is the standard error times four and so let's add let's percentify that 
And then I'm going to say that the upper is going to be upper x would be equal to the middle point plus 4 uh, times the standard error. To the standard error. So now I'm going four standard deviations, which should be basically all of the data, right? But it keeps changing, so it's a little wonky. So then I'm going to make a skinny double A. Select this, home tab, clipboard, double A. And then we're going to say this is going to be X. I'm going to call this P of X. And I'll call this, we'll do a Z. And then we'll do another one here. So let's go to the these home tab, font group, black, white, center. I'm going to make my X's go from around... Let's make it 0 0.035, uh, 03, let's say 30, just so we, I'm, I'm spreading it out a little bit wider than this. And then percentify, add some decimals. Hold on a second. This should be 30, let's say 30. And then this one, I don't really need the decimals here. I'll get rid of the decimals. And then, and then, we're going to go up to like 60 about, let's say like 65, 65. And this will be 31. And I'll percentify and then put 31. And then I'm going to bring it up to like 65. So I'll select these. I could use a sequence, but I'm going to just count it up to like 65. That's not too far out. Okay. And then let's do our norm dot disk calculation equals norm dot dist. And I'm going to take the X, which is that comma divided by the mean which we're going to it's going to keep changing on us but it's going to be that comma the standard deviation so i'm still here now i'm on the standard deviation and which is here standard deviation doo -doo, is going to be the standard error comma so same formula but now we want it to not be cumulative therefore zero instead of one Percentify to recognize, add some decimals, double click to take it down. Oh, hold on a second, K Paso, what happened? Double click on it. I need the mean needs to be F4, F4, and so does the standard deviation F4, making it absolute. Enter now, double click on it, take it down, and it adds up. Notice uh, if I select all of this. The sum adds up to 10,000% and I'd like it to add up to 100% because I would like the area under the curve to be 100%. But whenever we look at these binomial type of situations, we're graphing in essence the percentages, it adds up to the 10,000. Typically, and you don't have to do this, I will sometimes go into here and take the whole thing and divide it by 100. And then I'll copy that down just so I have the totals now adding up to 100%. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that here. Now, if I was to graph this out, you can graph it out this way. Control shift down, control backspace to go back up to the top. Insert. We can make multiple graphs. We can make this into just a bar graph and it still looks bell shaped. I can make it into a uh, line graph, but I want to make it into our, our area graph, selecting this one and then go to all graphs. I'm going to go to the area and make it an area graph. And so that's our most fancy kind of graph that we can basically do here. And I'm going to add the Z-score so we can practice doing that. So I'm going to select this one. It's going to keep on changing on me, but that's okay. I'm going to be okay with that. I'm going to select these two, make them a little bit uh, smaller so we have a bit more room. Let's double click on it and then make them a little wider so they have some room. Then I'm going to go here. I need to change this to have my X's over here. So I want to go to the design and select and then i want to go to this side and select this range control shift down control backspace and i'm going to select here and then back so it appears there it is i'm going to say okay and then uh okay so now i want to basically make a make this range i'm going to i'm going to basically try to map out uh, this range and we'll start uh, with this range we did up here on the upper and lower and I'll do it in terms of z-scores so, so I'm going to go from the one point actually let's actually do this one this is about two standard deviations which is often 
somewhat close to what we normally do. So I'm going to try to uh, say this as a header. So I'm going to let's calculate our z scores first. So the z score is going to be equal to each x minus the middle point which is the proportion f4 on the keyboard to make it absolute and then close that up divided by the standard deviation which we're approximating here with the calculation of the standard error f4 on the keyboard to make it absolute so that i can then go back on that let's add some decimals decimalize it and then copy it down so there we have that i'm going to make this double click a little bit thinner make it a little bit wider than the thinnest it needs to be and then I'm going to try to put a Z for this range. I'm going to add this range. Now, I'd like to include in my graph not only the X's, but a Z score under it. To do that, I have to graph something on top of it. I want to try to graph that middle part of the graph that's going to be between uh, between the, the upper and lower, the middle bit here. So in other words, I want to, I want to say this is going to be where... I'm going to do a try to do a dynamic text field to pick up these two numbers to practice that. So I'm going to say this is going to be Z needs to be, uh, uh, I'm going to pick up this number needs to be less than, and then that less than is going to need quotes around it because it's going to be seen as a text. So I'm going to put quotes around it. That makes it a text. Whenever I have a text, I also have to put an and that ties the text together. So whenever I have those quotes, I need an and, and then I'm gonna put a Z, let's close this up and I'm gonna say, put the Z in here, and then that's gonna be uh, less than, and then I can put the quotes around it. So there's my text, and then I'm gonna put an and, and then I want to tie it to this one. It's gotta be less than that. Now, if I just hit enter, it gives me this long thing because of the decimals. So then I can go back in here and say, I wanna round this. So I'm going to round it, embedding around in front of that. And then I'm going to go behind it and say, comma, how far out do I want it to go? Let's say two digits. So I'm going to say two digits past. And then let's do the same thing over here, round tab. And then how far out do we want to go? Two digits, close it up, enter. There we have it, something like that. So it's got to be greater than negative 2.08 and uh, less than 2.08 let's do that with a logic test let's make this black not yellow not yellow black and white and then yellow means there's a problem and there's no problem i got no problem and then we're going to say this is going to be an if test and then tab and i want two conditions therefore i'm going to put an and embedded and i'm going to say if and this is the first logic test this number needs to be greater than the lower number and then comma the next logic test part of the and this number needs to be less than the this number and then close up the and back to the ifs what do you want to do if those two and conditions are met then i want you to give me the p of x numbers the percent comma what if it's not i want you to leave it blank which i have to do with a text quote space quote and and there it is now i need to copy this down so anything that's in v or w that's outside our field i'm going to make f4 so this v thing f4 absolute and then this w f4 absolute and then that should be good okay nothing's there and so i'm going to then percentify it add some decimals copy it down and when I get to that middle point, there it starts to show up, right? So I'm just gonna graph that middle bit. All right, let's graph that, let's add that over here. So I'm gonna say then, let's go into my chart design data, and then I'm gonna add a data set, which is gonna be called this, delete this bit. I'm gonna select the whole thing because it's gonna keep changing as I shuffle the numbers. Control backspace, I'm gonna select this until it shows up, but boom, and then okay and okay and k paso there it goes all right i just had to click around a bit for it to show up all right and so then what i want to do i'm going to double click on this middle bit make a secondary access because i want to show another x down here i'm going to delete this thing on the side i don't need that get out of here and then i'm going to go to the data and on the second axis is going to be this one i'm going to make another 
different one down here related to that second set of data, which is going to be the Z's. Control shift down, control backspace, and then I'm going to select here and then back until it shows up. Boom. And then OK. It's not showing up down here yet because I have to go to the plus button and say I want axes. Select my secondary axis. It shows up top. I want to bring it below more. Make sure I select the one up top because that's the one I want to bring down below. So we're going to bring it low. And then uh, there we go. Did it pick it? What, what happened to it? I think it just got a little wonky here for a second. It's okay. It's just froze. There it goes. My computer's going crazy. I'm going to save it before I break it. All right. So there we, so there we have it. So now we can see, you know, the middle point keeps on shuffling around here. I could put my little, uh, my little cheater stick right here. And now I can go Doo -doo, and say, let's make this green and we can go, okay. The center point of this thing is, is at the 50.33, right? 50.33 about debt. And it's about zero in terms of the, of the Z score in the middle. That's what it should be. And then if we go up uh, around two, how many standard deviations? 2.8. That's where the tails should be, right? So like 2.08 uh, about is around here right and then 2.08 is around here and that 2.08 uh is somewhere like uh you know in here where we have the 2.51 and so forth in terms of the x's so then you can play around and with our graph and give a visualization all right so let's go ahead and select all of this and make it calm blue ocean home tab font group bordered and ah the blue the blue okay and then we're going to do the same thing here let's make this let's make this calm blue and then we'll put a header up top with the black and white to do black white let's do a let's do a spell check while we're here check the spelling proportion of i think that's what it was supposed to be change the word is not a dictionary okay whatever i'm not even gonna whatever i'm not even gonna do that i'm just gonna call that good